a damn, damn fine cup of coffee. So you think you're a 90s fan? I love you. Ditto. Okay, Laura Palmer, can you handle this? Are you stupid or what? Did you hear what I said? It's I Love the 90s, and this is 1990. I'm not finished. Oh. The flicks. Oh. <laughs> the fashions, the trends, the tunes. The TV. The totally awesome year that gave us these burning questions. What was the most important life lesson in Goodfellas? Nobody goes to jail unless they want to. Nobody's going to jail, Karen. Now take me to jail. What kind of fancy pants hooker is Julia Roberts? Now, I've been with street whores before. Generally, they don't have as many teeth as Julia Roberts. <laughs> and who says the mayor can't smoke a little crack? All you can say is the guy was trying to put the Columbia back into District of Columbia. You got to respect that. The answers to those questions plus... <gasps> One seriously weepy bald chick. Nothing compares to you. And fun with assisted suicide. What a waiting room that must have been. The doctor will kill you now. Break it down. Because you love the 90s, because you still dream about a four-way with Wilson Phillips, admit it. This is 1990. Stop. Have a time. Hated it. What's up? You have selected... I love 90. I love 90. I love 90. You're on my fax. Well, that's one I haven't been on before. What was the pitch for Pretty Woman? Okay, it's like uh, Cinderella, but with a hookah. Julia Roberts is a reluctant streetwalker. Work it, work it, baby, work. Richard Gere is a billionaire playboy. This isn't a date, it's business. The two meet, sparks fly, love flourishes, a whore, no moor. Look at her as a hooker. If we had more hookers that look like Julia Roberts, nobody would be married. Now, I've been with street whores before. Generally, they don't have as many teeth as Julia Roberts. <laughs> but, on the other hand, Julia Roberts costs $20 million. I can get for for three bucks around the corner. Two thousand. Three thousand. Done. Holy sh**! <laughs> the prostitute's rule is you can't let the guy kiss you on the mouth. You know, because you might fall in love with him. I don't kiss him on the mouth. Neither do I. She had morals as a hooker. I could appreciate that. And then she kissed him on the mouth and she gave it up for free. I like when she when she's trying on all the outfits, you know? Because I just like to see Julia Roberts in different outfits. That's why I watch the Golden Globes every year. Oh, I also love a scene where she's um, goes into the store and she's still in her hooker attire and the snotty little women won't help her. You're obviously in the wrong place. Please leave. And so then she goes back, and she's like, yeah, I remember how you wouldn't help me. She's like, big mistake. Big, huge. Really worked out well for the prostitute. Did not work out well for Jason Alexander's character. She's a <laughs> shit. Ah! Jason Alexander rapist? What's up with that? Ow! Come on, come on. Oh, Get off me! Little tiny George Costanza trying to rape Julie Roberts. Very upsetting. It must have been. And then, of course, at the end, it's a happy ending, and he shows up, you know, knight in shining armor and a limousine. It gives hope to whores. I seen a woman limping out here on, on 42nd Street with tight shoes and fur underwear. I looked at her and said, I'll marry her, that whore. We all have our price, you know? I know I do. Six bucks. Get you whatever you want. Me love you long time. I love 90. 11.30 a.m., February 24th. Entering the town of Twin Peaks. There weren't too many shows that I would not miss ever in my life, but uh, Twin Peaks is definitely one of them. One day, my log will have something to say about this. The Twin Peaks is a television program about a mystery. And the mystery is, what the hell is up with this show? There was a fish in the percolator. They brought in an odd FBI investigator played by uh, Kyle McLaughlin to figure out who killed Laura Palmer. Laura Palmer. 
Who killed uh, Laura Palmer? I've always had any. OJ. Did. Who killed Laura Palmer? Sure. More to the point, what's up with the dancing midget? And you know full well that David Lynch was going, how about a midget? <laughs> Be hilarious. People will think it's cool. They filmed the dwarf speaking backwards, and then they replayed it forwards, and then they put subtitles underneath it. Why we from the first thing the fresh song? And he just is moving is awesome. Whew. That was hard sleeping that night. Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good cup of coffee. Damn fine cup of coffee. I think Twin Peaks brought back coffee and pie. Two more pieces of this incredible pie. It started a coffee and pie craze throughout the U.S. They got a cherry pie there. That'll kill you. After a while, you sort of watch and you go, what the f*** is this about? But people loved it because they thought it was real smart. Really, it was just confusing. Vid Pig. It's been seven hours and fifteen. Nothing compares to you. Uh, the Prince song. Since you took your love away. Bet he's mad he gave that one up. That was a big hit. I can eat my dinner in a fancy restaurant. But nothing, I said nothing can take away the love. It's a lot of Sinead. I'm crying. Crying and crying. I wanted to cheer up, lighten up, Sinead. But I'm willing to give it another try. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. There was a tear at the end of that video. That was a touching moment. I, I, wait a minute. Compares. No, it's just something in my eye. I thought I was going to cry. Hotel, Mr. Mayor. What are we doing in the hotel, Mr. Mayor? Marion Barry, <laughs> my hero. I've got the power. Well, Marion Barry was the controversial mayor of, of Washington, D.C. Federal investigators nailed Barry on videotape smoking crack cocaine after the mayor was invited to what looked like a hotel crack party. Smoking crack with a prostitute. <laughs> Happened. Marion Barry smoked a little crack. What, mayors don't smoke crack? Come on. All you can say is the guy was trying to put the Columbia back into District of Columbia. You gotta respect that. As a PR move, not great. As a way to get high, yeah. And they stung him in the most lame way ever. They trapped him in a hotel room with it and they videotaped it. I always did that. Hey, Mayor, you want some free crack and prostitutes? I'm in tuning a lot. I'm in tuning that too. It's a common knowledge that the politicians do their thing, you know, they just don't get busted. And his brilliant defense was, bitch set me up. Damn bitch set me up like this. We're gonna celebrate Richard Gere for being in love with a hooker and then we're gonna condemn Marion Barry because he's with hookers and smoking crack. It's a double standard, don't you think? I understand that there are different sets of standards for different people and that's the American injustice system. This is what the 90s was all about, really, because he gets busted for smoking crack with a prostitute, goes to jail, and then ends up getting reelected. Only in America. <laughs> That's a mayor they can relate to. You know, I don't need some uptight politician. I need a guy who smokes crack and is with hookers like me. It just goes to prove that you can do anything wrong on this planet. And if you just go, I'm sorry, You'll get your job back and a raise. I'm going to, uh, to leave here and go about the business of government. Thank you. I love 90. Coming up, they called him Dr. Death. But why are you not killed if you're in your life today? But wait, refer your friends to us 
and we'll do you at 20% off. And the tough questions raised by Vanilla Ice. I sit back with my brand new invention. Now, this is his first single. How can he be back with a brand new mission? You think, well, this guy's a liar, and then you don't believe a word he says from then on. Where to your mother? Plus, a winning combo. Whoopi's body inhabited by Mr. Patrick Swayze. You don't just get into Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, you get all up in Whoopi Goldberg, and there's a distinction there. Ugh. Did you ever do that to me again? Next on I Love the 90s, 1990. But first... Michael Ian Black, uncut and uncensored on Marion Barry. You don't think Giuliani was smoking a little crack? No. They, the FBI... Busted Marion Barry because they did not like to see a powerful, strong black man in power. They set him up. Yeah, it was a suitcase full of crack. Yeah, he wanted to buy it. Entrapment. That's the very definition of entrapment. Dance songs of 90. Break it down. 1990, baby, was you there? MC Hammer here with your ultra bumping, grinding, slamming, jamming, mega grooving power dance hits of 1990. Break it down. Pump up the jam by Technotronic. Everybody, everybody, black box. And finally. by Madonna. <laughs> you can't touch this. The dance hits of the 90s, too. Legit. To quit. Reach out, touch space. Ghost is an American classic. Yeah, you know, an important movie. Patrick Swayze can't seem to die. And he comes back and he bothers his wife. That's what Ghost was all about. The whole time I'm watching Ghost, I'm waiting for Shaggy and Scooby to show up. <laughs> hey, Scoob! Her husband's dead! Somebody help me! To me, is devastated. Wow, she was a good crier, wasn't she? She just presses a switch and then two drops just come right down there. I love you. Ditto. It was such a great love that when she said, I love you, he'd respond with, ditto. 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 Ah, oh, that feels good. Oh, my love. The Righteous Brothers singing that song. My darling. Who could forget it? What's nice is that the two of them are together enjoying molding this big clay penis. It molds up and it goes up and then it falls like the pottery thing just had an orgasm. Oh, no. <laughs> Patrick Swayze embodies Whoopi Goldberg, which kind of takes cross-dressing to a new level. It's transgender, cross-race, bisexual, pooty tang. You don't just get into Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, you get all up in Whoopi Goldberg, and there's a distinction there. Ugh. Did you ever do that to me again? It culminates with um, Patrick Swayze killing Tony Goldman in a hideous, like, demonish style death. Tony Goldwyn then gets pulled down to the depths of hell by these really cheesy animated uh, ghost demon guys that make these really, really like, oh, oh, oh. They kind of dropped the ball on that one. I guess they spent all their budget on the ceramic scene. The lesson of ghost is don't die, live. I was gonna die, but I decided against it because of ghost. News break. Today, Dr. Jack Gavorkian took the stand on his fight for the right to use his suicide machine. Jack Gavorkian. Oh, Dr. Death, Dr. D. He's killing people! Why did you go ahead and develop the device? It's necessary. There's a great demand for it. He was a doctor from Royal Oak, Michigan, 
who began to euthanize patients with terminal illnesses, and he came up with a suicide machine. The Kevorkian machine looked like mousetrap. It had all these contraptions, and you press a button, and like a ball falls, and then it hits a log, and then the lady dies. I'm the only one willing to do it. Medical community to me is irrelevant. Here's the blue one, and here's the yellow. This one's gonna kill you. Make sure you're connected. What a waiting room that must have been. The doctor will kill you now. Do you think insurance covered Dr. Gavorkian? But why are you not kill if you're one in your life today? Here I am trying to do a new service for them, for patients of theirs who, who are begging for death. But wait, refer your friends to us and we'll do you at 20% off. Well, here's the thing that's cool about Jack Gavorkian is that he sat, didn't he like sit on the on the stand and say to people, absolutely, I killed him. Mr. Kevorkian, how do you plead? <laughs> he just looked like the devil. And now he's locked up. Poor little Kevorkian. I think he did good work. Uh, I mean, I don't I know if I agree with the work, but I mean, he got the job done. Big big. All right, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. I look funny. The hot out baby. That's my s***. It was like the perfect party song. I see the bottle of Hennessy you got on your shelf. So just let me introduce myself. My name is Humpty. Pronounced with the Humpty. Shock G was the producer and the MC of Digital Underground, and his alter ego was Humpty Hump. It was a groove that was so great it almost made you forget the, uh, the big fake nose that the fellow was wearing. I like to rhyme, I like my beats funky, I'm spunky, I like mold me a lumpy, I'm sick with this. How did he wear this? He's ridiculous. It makes it hard to breathe. Come here, y'all, you ridiculous, yeah, I called you fat, look, look at, at me, me, I'm skinny. He was very nasal, you know, he's very nasal. I once got busy in a Burger King bathroom, I'm crazy. How classless you gotta be to get busy in a Burger King bathroom. Like, you're gonna take your date to a Burger King bathroom. You couldn't take her to Denny? A Humpty Dance. This is your chance to do the hump. Cha cha cha. Oh, do me, baby. I do the hump, the hump. All I remember, like the dance, was just like. That was it. First I lift to the side like my leg was broken. Shake it and jiggle it, kind of like you were smoking. And when they say smoking, it's like uh, crack. It's crackheads. Come on, white people. I do the hump, the hump. Puerto Ricans. I do the hump, the hump. Samoans. Mexican. <laughs> I love 90. MC Hammer came on the scene 90, and then like a few months later, Vanilla Ice came on the scene, and they had this kind of rivalry going. Can't touch this. When I heard Can't Touch This, I was like, oh, MC Hammer, he's L. He was the first hip hop show. My, 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 my music hit so hard. Brother just had energy, man. I mean, everything hopping, jumping all up and down, shirt sweating. Stop. Have a time. Stop. Have a time. Fresh new and bands. All my dancing came from the club, from the street. Just pure street style. I liked MC Hammer's pants. It was sort of like a skirt, but they were pants. The MC Hammer pant was sort of droopy drawers. Sort of, you got a load in your shorts there. When I first seen Vanilla Ice, I felt like, wow, we got a white MC Hammer. <laughs> Now that the party is jumping. That boy can dance his ass. I'm like, damn. Who is this white boy that's rocking? He going into splits. He doing everything. All right, stop. Collaborate, Collaborate and listen. I sit back with my brand new invention. Now, this is his first single. How can he be back with a brand new mission? You think, well, this guy's a liar. And then you don't believe what he says from now on. Word to your mother. Here's where Vanilla Ice lost me. When they asked him, did you sample Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie? He went, no, their song goes din 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 din. That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes ding 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 ding. That little bitty change, it's not the same. Just admit it, you stole the song, you cheesed it up. Break it down. Out of MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice. I've got to say I like Vanilla Ice better. Personally, I think Vanilla Ice won because he could rock a mic like a vandal and wax a chump like a candle. And MC Hammer could do neither of those things. I would go Hammer. I'd always go Hammer. You can't touch this. It's a classic. Oh, oh, oh. Stop. Hammer time. I love 90. Coming up, the emotional impact of guest jeans. The ad was supposed to encourage you to buy these jeans and put them on and 
Somehow I found that I would take mine off while I was watching these commercials. And what doesn't suck about being the plus-sized one in Wilson Phillips? I felt sorry for the poor fat lady in the pants that was out on the beach. Fat ladies normally don't like to go to the beach. Plus, a real steamy way to help the environment. We must do the forbidden dance because we must save the rainforest and the only thing that will do it is our groins. <laughs> Next on I Love the 90s, 1990. But first, Dirty Alternative Rocker of 90. Liz Fair here bringing you the Dirty Alternative Rockers of 1990. Black Francis, the Dirty Pixie Rocker. Jane's Addiction, the Dirty Stealing Rockers. And Mike Patton, it's so groovy, it's out of sight. The Dirty Rap Rocker. Those are the f***ing run guys of 1990. Gotta love them, gotta wash them. Can't take them home to mom. What is it called? I think it's called Lombada. It's supposed to be the rage in Europe. Lombada. I wonder what Lombada means. <laughs> La-la-la-la. Lombada the Forbidden Dance. I remember the Forbidden Dance, but I don't know much about it because it was forbidden. Just dance. Lombada, the Forbidden Dance. Uh, well, pretty much we do a movie about it. The secret is out. Who ever thought that that much like leg movement, waist movement, you know, sweaty bodies, thrusting. pelvic thrusts, yeah that that was about the rainforest. The rainforest is too important. I say if Petramco is destroying the rainforest, well then we should just boycott their ass. We must do the forbidden dance because we must save the rainforest and the only thing that will do it is our groins. <laughs> My leg here and here, okay? And the girl's leg here and grindy, grindy, huh? Well, it's like watching a porno flick. It's like the cool kind of like have sex through your jeans kind of dance. It is a dance you should not do because you can get somebody pregnant as you are dancing with them. And he had to make this face right here. Mm -hmm. Lombada face right here. My favorite thing about the Lombada uh, movie craze was that there were all of a sudden was lots of Lombada classes. Open and shimmy down. You put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, you put your... You sure this is the Lombada? It's Lombada. It's Puerto Rican. You don't know. And I remember everybody was trying to do it. And you would watch TV shows, and they'd have the Lombada off. It was so steamy and hot and sexy and, you know, sweaty, dirty, erect. Vid Pig. a great song. I mean, you got to give props what props are due, and, and Michael Bolton can sing. He tears it up with the ladies. He sort of had that Fabio thing going for me. I make sure all the windows in the car closed, soundproofed, and I crank it up. And I start crying, whatever. What is Michael Bolton's hair? Kind of a cross between a mane and a mullet. You know, I like the hair, the long curly hair. I mean, I didn't have a poster of him. Please. <laughs> it was more like a skullet. Committed to the hair thing and the ringlets. You know, I think that's sexy. And Barry Manilow, too. <laughs> All that I'm living for is gone. Every once in a while, along comes an old lady who captures America's heart. I've fallen, and I can't get up! I've fallen and I can't get up was really the where's the beef of the 90s. It was one of those things that suddenly everyone thought was just so funny and everyone had to quote it. I've fallen and I can't get up! Please, someone call 911! <laughs> Cause that's not what you say when you fall. You should be like, damn it! Oh, help! That was funny as hell. <laughs> it's still funny. <laughs> I have fallen.
here and I can't get up. Well, bitch, try. I don't know what it is about pissed off, helpless old ladies that really people really enjoy, but there's a market out there for it. We could have assisted that octogenarian we would have. That woman very possibly could have fallen and couldn't get up and died, and still people think it's really funny. Actually, that makes it more funny to me. <laughs> Big pig. This is the music video featuring the girl looking up and dancing. The Delight Grooves in the Heart video, I believe, was nothing more than like a, a green screen. I liked that song. I don't know, it reminded me of a big hangover or something. <laughs> yes, the red-haired girl and then the two weird guys. Both of those guys could be on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Bootsy Collins, too. Yeah, he was in the band. Watch out. Still rock that doo 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 doo. When the bass line comes on, everybody gets on the floor. Take it, Hal. They had a clever way of adding D onto words to create a new word. Like, say you got in trouble and you had to stay after school. D tension. You see? Super excited about something? Delirious. <laughs> totally one hit wonders. I mean, can you name another song? I, I no. Butter. Yes, jeans. Uh, big, big, big in the nineties. Did I have a pair of yes jeans? I had a pair of yes jeans. Little triangle thing. That's all I used to wear in high school. Every girl wanted guest jeans. They make your butt look so good. Do we wear guest jeans? No, but I got, into, I got into some. Whoa! Those ads introduced us to Claudia Schiffer. She's like this, and she's like this, and she's like this, and then she's got like these teeth that are so big. The reincarnation of Bridget Bardot, you know, she's so hot. Um, a little Germanic for my taste. I believe that when I put them on, I became, a little piece of me became Claudia Schiffer. The ad was supposed to encourage you to buy these jeans and put them on, and somehow I found that I would take mine off while I was watching these commercials. So I don't think it was a very good ad. For guys hot for Claudia Schiffer, yeah, does Raggedy Ann have cotton tea? Yes! Who else did guess? Busty, fabulous, ample Anna Nicole. Wow, I thought I masturbated a lot to the last girl. This next girl, I wouldn't show up for school some days. I love 90. Coming up, the decade's first great coke and violence flick. Is there a problem, officer? Plus, don't throw on those snap bracelets unless you've established your safety word. It's for preteens who are into pre-bondage. I like it. Next on I Love the 90s, 1990. But first, Hotties of 90. Hi, I'm Michael Bolton, here to lend my time, love, and tenderness to the Hotties of 1990. Christina Applegate. The Bundy's barely legal hottie. Robin Givens, head of the class and former Mrs. Tyson hottie. And Nicole Kidman, she's a Sheila hottie. That's what they call them down under. When a man loves a woman. The hotties of 1990. Jay and Silent Bob rename your favorite TV show. Hey out there in TV land, it's the coolest motherfucking cats on the planet. Jay and Silent Bob. And we're renaming your favorite TV show of 1990. F***ing deal with it, f***ing. Watch Jimmy Carey keep it real for Whitey and Burn victims. And those fly girls are mad hot, right Silent Bob? Oh, I want to touch that little... I know mean, Jay was on that piece and I just... All right, suckers, see you in 91. Snigins. Dances with Wolves was interesting for me because 
I didn't like the movie. Then I realized I was just jealous. This is Kevin Costner's directorial debut in which he plays a disaffected Civil War veteran. I've always wanted to see the frontier. Why is the image of uh, the back of Kevin Costner's ass coming into my head? Didn't Costner show his ass in this movie? And then he won an Oscar. Kevin Costner is Lieutenant John Dunbar, who befriends wolves and Native Americans. The dancing scene around the fire, I mean, that shows you Kevin has range as an actor. I give it an eight. It must be, feel kind of strange dancing around a fire and, you know, trying to seem cool and macho, but I think he did a good job. It's a love story also. Me, you need help. The drama, of course, with uh, there's bloodshed, and then, of course, love conquers all. And I'm living now in Kevin's guest teepee. Mary McDonald as the Indian woman that Kevin Costner falls in love with. Stands with the fist? Yes. That name says it all. I stand with the fist. Don't mess with me, because I will clock you. Complete fair hair. Somebody was out there with the blow dryer and the teepee, styling her up. Hello. You here? Good. Mary McDonald, who plays the interpreter, um, says, Your name is Dances with Wolves. How do you say it? Shumani to Danka Obachi. Shumani to Danka Obachi. <laughs> Dances with Wolves. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. It's weird, I don't know where you get it. Oh, that's right. Because I danced like an idiot around the fire with the wolves. It was a brilliant film. The movie always came with that qualification. You know, you're going to love it if you can make it through. For me, though, I was just like, oh, but Kevin Costner, mm -hmm. so I didn't care. I didn't care at all. I could have watched it all night. I love 90. You can do what you want to do. In the, the premise of the show is we're going to be the funny minority sketch show. Somebody call a priest! Priest! Father Headley here. What's his name? Schwartz. Not to worry. And it's created by uh, Keenan Wayne. The greatest sketch show ever made. That's that's that show. Every Sunday, babe. Right there. Let's go. Too many black people. Are kidding. <laughs> they had so many different characters. Come on. Well, you had Homie the Clown. Of course, Homie the Clown was big. Homie don't play that. He was a ghetto clown. That's just scary by itself. I mean, you know, clowns in the ghetto. They, they rob you. My favorite was Damon's prison character. Legally repressing my bullshitude. Allow me to shed my foreskin on the issue. Now, I've retracted my go dads with gigantic proportions. Oh! Fire Marshal Bill was one of the craziest, weirdest characters. Hello, guys. How you doing? It's good to see you. It's fine. Show, but let me show you something. It's raining Men on film is probably one of the most memorable sketches that they did. Hello, I'm Blaine Edward, and I'm Antoine Merriweather, and welcome to Men on Film. We didn't know whether to laugh or say this is so homophobic. <laughs> you better give me back my scar. <laughs> Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Like two snaps in Z formation. Two snaps, a twist, twist and a kiss. kiss. They had little hats, and every movie was like, Hey, it. Vid Pig. I know that there is pain, but you hold on for one more day. Break free, break from the chains. Break free from the chains. Break free. Wilson Phillips. I love those gals, you know. I'm obviously not the only one, because they do really well. We're talking about top songs of the decade. <laughs> Wilson Phillips, hold on, yeah, yeah. It was my anthem. I remember thinking the blonde girl with the boy haircut was kind of cute. More of a, I'd like to sleep with you, cute. It's like uh, Charlie's Angels meets Nutra System. It was like the three girls, right? There was the, the, the blonde, and then there was the brunette, and then there was Carney. No. <laughs> I'm not telling any fat jokes. <laughs> Someday somebody's gonna make you wanna turn around and say goodbye. Say goodbye, say goodbye.
I felt sorry for the poor fat lady in the pants that was out on the beach. Fat ladies normally don't like to go to the beach. Nothing wrong with putting on a suit and laying out in the sun, okay? I do it all the time. Okay, don't be bashful, you Atkins people. Join the club. I love 90. Edward Scissorhands is the title character who is called Edward Scissorhands because his hands are garden shears. But I'm a creep. I'm not finished. Oh. Then he was adopted by the Avon lady and taken to rural America. I think you should just come home with me. Johnny Depp. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking Edward Scissorhands. He had that sort of pasty white face and that crazy wild sort of um, Robert Smith hair from The Cure. Show me, show me, show me when any guy saw the poster for Edward Scissorhands, one thought went through their head. How does he masturbate? No wonder he's so sad. You think about um, having a boyfriend with scissors for hands, and you're like, hmm, I wonder how that would work out. Um, <laughs> it could be a little painful. Especially on the waterbed scene. <laughs> I'm pretty much betting that Edward Scissorhands owns a bidet. Shredded the toilet roll, Eddie. What I remember real well is that he was cutting people's hair. He would be like doing like this, yeah. and all sorts of like grass and air and bush flying. would be flying. Just tons of bush. That yeah. guy got a lot of bush. That was the single most thrilling experience of my whole life. Kim, don't worry, Eddie. She's waiting for you. The return of Anthony Michael Hall. That's right. As a bad guy. Yeah, it's not how I want to see my Anthony Michael Hall. I gotta admit. I think it was great that Anthony Michael Hall could go from like the tortured nerd in The Breakfast Club to the nerd torturer. In a short couple of years. Oh, you're like, that's that little punk? He's all big now? Damn! Here I have something that makes you a, that makes you a freak. It doesn't make you a freak, it makes you special. No matter what, Edward will always be special. Everything is an opportunity. Everything, even if you have scissor hands, it's an opportunity to make somebody's life better. And that's what John Depp did. I love 90. This is the snap-on bracelet, and to put it on, all you do is slap it on. I was obsessed with these slap bracelets. They were so cool. How very sassy. Well, every generation kind of had like its little mood ring or it's like pet rock, but this was fun. This is fun? It just fractured my finger. Here was a great idea. You know, a shoddy piece of jagged metal inside a flimsy pastel fabric. Yeah, it's like being cuffed. It was basically a, a toy for, for very small people for S&M. Oh, you little dirty man. It's for preteens who are into pre-bondage. I like it. I used to get in trouble in class because all day long, like, I couldn't pay attention for the life of me. I remember a lot of girls in study hall had these. So I'd just be doing this, <laughs> you know? Like, over, like, see how annoying it gets? Watch. We just keep talking. And then all of a sudden, the rumor came out. No more slap wrestlers. Why? Because they can cut your wrist and you can die from it. I think the teachers actually uh, started the rumor of someone slitting the wrist so that they would ban them from the school. And then they took all the staff places away, which we were pretty sad for like 20 minutes. I love 90. Coming up, how hairspray can keep you from getting whacked. The wives in Goodfellas all had this very specific hair look that was very like a helmet, kind of. And I think that was literally to protect them from a 22 cap to the head. They used so much hairspray that it was like, Wah! Why do you think you shoot me for? Give me a break. Goodfellas, next on I Love the 90s, 1990. But first, log on to VH1.com. Get artist info, play fun games, browse photo galleries, purchase CDs and DVDs. And while you're there, cyber geek, tell us how you really feel on our message boards. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Goodfellas, just one of those movies that hit instant classic from the first time you see it. Best gangster flick ever. Oh, that movie was brutal. 
You're the pain. Ray Liotta plays Henry Hill, an outsider who joins the mob. What do you do? What? What do you do? I'm a construction The wives in Goodfellas all had this very specific hair look that was very like a helmet, kind of. And I think that was literally to protect them from the 22 cap to the head. Like, they used so much hairspray that it was like, Pway! Why do you think you're shooting me for? Give me a break. Are you stupid or what? Did you hear what I said? Jimmy Conway, Robert De Niro. Didn't I tell you not to buy nothing? Huh? What's, What's the matter with you? you? To me, the most impressive thing is that Joe Pesci, who stands about five foot five, maybe, could be so intimidating, scary. Everybody's gonna do the funny line, right? Funny out like I'm a clown. Funny? What do you mean funny? Funny? What do I use you? Scariest character in Goodfellas? Cocaine. It's great to be a mob guy, but not a mob guy on drugs. That could really screw you up. Crap, the FBI is right outside our door. Let's try and hide 400 kilos of cocaine quickly and look nonchalant. Is there a problem, officer? My favorite shot in the whole movie, camera angle low. His tongue is like out like this. He's like... Why is it things like that stay with us? God forbid, what would happen if you had to go to prison? Nobody goes to jail unless they want to. Nobody's going to jail, Karen. Now take me to jail. I remember that there was one scene where they all went to jail, but they all lived like kings. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Who would have thought prison could be so great, you know, slicing garlic so thin that when you put it in the pan, it just melts? Prison. If you're Paul Sorvino, pretty sweet. We watch it at Christmas time at our house, a little tradition. Gather round, kids. It's lesson learning time. Final thought. There was a problem. Yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. It was that kind of can-do sentiment that sent us hurtling optimistically into a new decade. Sure, the year would have its negatives, the ominous rise of the Lombada, but it had a lot of hope not to mention some super hot babes. And for that, 1990, I give you two snaps and a bag of chips. Remember, take care of yourselves and each other. I love 90.